Patrick M. Politico, it is now time to turn the table with Juliana Goldman with Bloomberg. Uh, Juliana, we obviously are going to expect to hear some news today from President Obama about the NSA and obviously some of the tweaks that he would like to make about, uh, about the kind of data gathering that they do. Uh, what are we sort of finding out about where the president stands on obviously this classic balance between security versus privacy? Uh, has he sort of looked back on some of the rev rev revelations over the past year and felt that, in fact, the NSA is, in fact, gathering too much? Yeah, I mean, the big question here is what can the government, uh, it's not just what the government can do, but what it should do, Patrick. And so uh, I think you hit the nail on the head when you talk about the balance that the president is trying to strike here. Uh, and going back, I mean, really the changes that he's announcing focus on the bulk data collection, the metadata collection, and whether or not that information, we're talking about, about phone records, we're not talking about content, but whether or not that information should be housed at the National Security Agency in control of the government. Immediately, the change for this program is going to be that the NSA now has to go and get a court order from the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court in order to access any of that data. So, so the White House is saying that they're making dramatic changes to this program, but really the major change immediately is having to get this court order. Well, moving up to New Jersey, uh, Juliana, we're kind of ending week two of heavy scrutiny on Chris Christie. Uh, over the, the Fort Lee scandal. And what's interesting that we're seeing here in Washington is we've seen some Republicans try to make a, a, a link to Benghazi over this. I think you saw Lindsey Graham saying, hey, Chris Christie was very upfront and came out and was very honest about things. And why doesn't the Obama administration do the same thing about Benghazi? Is there any correlation, even just symbolically, between the, the way that both Chris Christie and President Obama approach these obviously very different situations? I mean, look, People died. There were casualties in Benghazi. There are no casualties, uh, no deaths from the Fort Lee scandal. So it seems to me to be uh, a bit of a stretch. But certainly if you look at week two of the Bridgegate scandal, uh, certainly more questions are being raised than answers. You have Chris Christie beefing up his, uh, his legal team, hiring uh, associate um, uh, Rudy Giuliani to help advise his team with the uh, New Jersey State Assembly investigation. And this is going to be an interesting weekend for Chris Christie when he heads to Florida. He, Ken Langone uh, is hosting sort of a meet and greet, not, not a fundraiser per se, but a meet and greet with donors. And Chris Christie is going to be doing some, uh, some fundraisers for the Republican Governors Association. So it will be interesting to see whether or not uh, donors are kind of getting cold feet when it comes to Christie, because as front runner status goes, he certainly uh, was a potential Republican front runner in the money race. Well, and quickly, we've seen a lot of news about retirements coming out of Congress. In fact, just I think this morning or last night about Tom Coburn also deciding uh, that he will not seek re-election. Is there any, just based on our conventional wisdom about how these districts or states vote, uh, is there any sort of sense right now about which party may or may, benef may or may not benefit from what seems to be a really strong lineup of folks that will not seek re-election? No, you really, there really is no, uh, no conventional wisdom. We can't really uh, make an argument one way or the other. It's kind of a wash since December. Uh, Politico reported that there have been uh, about four, four Democrats announcing that they won't be seeking re-election in competitive races. Democrats then point to uh, the five Republican uh, districts, five Republican incumbents that aren't Republican candidates that aren't going to be seeking uh, re-election. Those are in competitive districts. So it kind of is a wash right now. Regaining control of the House is always going to be an uphill battle uh, for Democrats. It continues to be an uphill battle. You factor in uh, the president's declining poll numbers and the fallout uh, from his health care rollout. And before we let you go, on much less serious news, Michelle Obama turned 50 this week. And we're asking people, you know, she actually did an interview, um, I want to say it was with People magazine, I could be wrong, in which she talked about how she's sort of reflecting on how much more she would like to do uh, in the remaining years of the Obama administration. But when you look back on her time in the White House so far, has there been one or two moments that sort of define her role as First Lady? You know, I think about a lot of the images of her in the vegetable garden or her dancing on the Ellen DeGeneres show or dancing all around the world. And that really does speak to uh, the, the image of health and wellness and the anti-obesity efforts that she's been trying uh, to promote. It breaks down uh, race barriers. It breaks down uh, demographic barriers. And it makes you know, having this, this healthy, this well-being, uh, this, this healthy lifestyle tangible uh, for all Americans. All right, Juliana Goldman Bloomberg, thanks a lot for joining us. Sure.